Hey, podcaster. I'm Tim Wahlberg, your podcast performance coach, with another actionable tip so you can grow your podcast authority, generate leads, and convert with ease. Today's tip is a question. If you were nominated for a podcast award, would you be a successful podcaster? The answer is, it depends. Gotcha. No, it wasn't a trick question, but I want you to think about what a successful podcast looks like for you. Hands down, the most common thing I hear from podcasters that I meet in my free coaching calls, by the way, go to my website and click the big orange button to grab your free podcast coaching call. I put the link in the show notes. But the most common answer I get to the question of what's your goal with podcast is... Grow my audience to millions of downloads and be the next Joe Rogan, please and thank you. Everyone seems to think that a successful podcast is a podcast with a ton of downloads. I get it. Who doesn't want to be popular? It's also nice to be liked and recognized. A podcast I produced and edit was recently nominated for an Ambie, and it felt good. I mean, considering some call the Ambies to be the Oscars of the podcasting world, and we were up against some hosts like Sanjay Gupta of CNN, a show from NPR and the Boston Globe, it felt good. It felt really good. More on that later, but accolades and big download numbers aren't actually what most entrepreneurs really need from their podcast, especially if they're using a podcast as a marketing tool for their business. So if you've decided that your podcast will be a success when you hit a certain number of downloads per month, keep listening. Most of the clients I work with are entrepreneurs who want to increase their authority and boost their sales. I'm here to tell you that you don't need massive downloads to do that. In fact, some of my most successful clients who are hitting their business goals with ease don't have huge downloads. And they're happy because they know they don't need to chase numbers for their podcast to do its job of setting them up as the obvious choice when someone is looking for help. Think of it like preparing a meal. Sure, you want it to taste great, but what that meal really needs to do is keep you from going hungry and hopefully providing fuel and nutrients to your body. If you just focus on what tastes good, you might end up with a diet of chocolate and pepperoni, which is probably going to taste amazing, come to think of it. Has anyone created chocolate-covered pepperoni? Hold on, I gotta find this out. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, someone's doing it. Not a lot, and that tells me something. Okay, right, so, you know, only serving up great taste can be done, but it's not likely going to give your body any nutritional value. It's the same thing when you create a podcast that is all about getting the biggest possible audience. It might make you feel good to be popular, but may not actually help you grow your business. Your business needs quality leads, not empty calories. So, Here is what you need to do once you stop chasing the numbers. Get clear on what success actually looks like for your podcast and your business. If you're a speaker, success might look like more invites to speak, higher speaker fees, or more books, courses, or consulting gigs sold from the stage. This comes from you building up authority and an engaged audience. If you're a coach or consultant, podcast success might look like more quality leads coming in regularly. If you're a brand podcast, success might look more like visits to your store or website with buyers ready to say yes. For a lot of the podcasters I talk to, once we let go of the ego-driven desire for more numbers, we discover that a smaller number of qualified listeners is exactly what their business needs. A client who is currently booked out, her podcast has less than 100 listeners per episode, but she's all right with that. Why? Because those 100 listeners are all 100% her ideal client. And by listening to the show, they show up to a discovery call primed to say yes. And she spends a lot less time talking to the wrong people. That's just one example of a podcaster who shifted from focusing on downloads as the marker of success and looking instead at what she wanted from her business and created a podcast that would help her get her there. So let me ask you. What does your podcast need to do for your business for it to be a success? Would big numbers and awards get you there? If not, you might need to measure success another way. Which brings me back to the Ambi nomination. 
Like I mentioned, I produce and edit a show called Big Lash Energy, hosted by Jana Marie. In the spring of 2024, our show was nominated in the Best Wellness or Relationship Podcast category. And for her, it was a huge success. Why? Because this podcast is not a marketing tool for her business. Her goal with this podcast is ultimately to grow it to attract sponsors. She is aiming to make her podcast her business, not support her business with her podcast. Big difference. And if you're not sure of what podcast type you are, listen to episode 75. I'll put the link in the show notes. So yes, it felt good to be nominated and to get that recognition for a podcast we both work really hard on. And for a show with growth as its primary goal, this nomination can be leveraged in so many ways to gain exposure through media, blogs, curated lists, and the promotional material we send out. Everything from this point forward is now from an Ambi-nominated podcast. Instant credibility. I'll leave a link in the show notes for you if you want to check it out. For me, this little show, Just One Tip, has been chugging along successfully for eight years. It still doesn't have huge numbers, and I'm fine with that because I designed it to boost my SEO, to help me get found on Google and YouTube by podcasters looking for help, and to give potential customers a chance to get to know me before reaching out to see if we should work together. How I know it's a success is by seeing my calendar fill up every week with potential clients, some of whom can't wait to work with me. Building my authority, increasing my search rank, and attracting lots of ideal clients. That's my picture of a successful podcast. What's yours? You need to know that if you want your podcast to serve you and your business. And I hope that's just the tip you need. Want to talk business? Want to talk podcasting? Want to talk goals? Want to talk microphones? Want to talk about my Ambi nomination? I'm happy to. Book a call. Get on my calendar. It's free. Do it by using the link in the show notes or at podcastperformancecoach.com. I'm Tim Wahlberg. See ya.